Hi everyone, Simona here from Vector Twist. In today's tutorial, I would like to show you how you can create an isometric wood cabin. We're going to be working with the sketch, trace it, fill it in, add some details and some extras, and even some gradients. And in the end, you're going to have a really cool looking isometric wood cabin. So let's get started. In Illustrator, I already placed my sketch. All we have to do is use the pen tool, set the stroke to black, the fill to none, and then start tracing our shapes. Just follow along your sketch and just make sure that each and every single shape is closed. This is really important because we're going to color it in later on. So when you trace along your sketch, just simply keep those shapes closed. And I'm working with the smart guides that really helps to snap things into place. So let's speed this up, I think you get the idea. And then we're going to work on our base and other parts of our isometric wood cabin. Let's create a new layer and call it base. And then we're going to repeat this step. So just trace along with the pen tool and the stroke, no fill. And make sure, of course, that your shapes are closed. Since I'm using the smart guides, you can see it snaps it easily onto the other anchor points I have. So it gets it quite accurately done. But you can trace this way really fast and really well. So we're almost done with the base here. And then we're going to just do some cleanup before we're going to color it in. As you can see, something is not overlapping properly, so just with the direct selection tool, we're going to correct these things. Then we create a new layer, call it Fill Base. Another layer, we call it Fill Hut. And then we're going to, of course, create a copy of what we just traced from the base onto the layer called Fill Base. So basically, we're going to duplicate both shapes. Then we want to lock our other layers and then we're going to color it in. In isometric, I always use three colors. One side's gonna be dark, the other side's gonna be lighter, and then the third side's gonna be the lightest color. So this is what we're going to do with our fill base layer. Let's select it all, and then we're going to choose the Life Paint Pocket tool, and then select the darkest color, and then fill in the sides. Of course, we're going to switch to a medium color and then going to fill the front with the medium color and then the lightest color for the top. Of course we're going to do the same thing to the top, so create a copy, keep working with the live paint bucket tool and then fill in your shapes. Just make sure that you're going to be consistent with the colors. So right side the darkest, the left side medium color and then the top is going to be the lightest color. So we're almost done with filling the shapes, and then we can move on to other things. Don't worry about the window for now, we're going to give it a different color later on. Now once we're done, all we have to do is go to our layers, and then turn off the stroke. We already have the stroke on a different layer, so we don't want to repeat the stroke. Then let's create another layer, and then call it texture. I have some custom brushes here, and we're just going to add some extra texture to our wood. So just draw with the brush tool some simple lines. The color is going to be just a little darker than the color in the fill, and then just add lines randomly. They don't have to be straight, it's really just an organic feel you're going for. Let's speed this up a little bit, I'm going to add them to all of the other pieces. Then we're going to do the same for the front part here, but we're just going to add some dots. Not that it was too thick, so a little bit smaller, just add some texture to it. You can just dab with the brush tool, it's really that simple. Of course we're going to repeat the step for the top. This gives us the feeling that the wood is actually cut off there. Now I have a layer called Extras, and there we're going to work with the pen tool again, switch it to a black, and then we're going to add some definition there as well. You can work just with the stroke and then use the width tool, or you can just create simple shapes and then close them off. This is really up to you. As you can see here, we can just close them off or we can just create a line and then use the width tool again. 
So one by one, I'm going to add all of the shapes so that our hut just looks a little bit more interesting. I think you get the idea. So let's speed this up. And once we are done with this, we're going to do some cleanup. And then I'm going to show you how to add some extra light with gradients. Now here's our hut and I think it looks pretty good. Now all we have to do is create one more layer, create a copy so we can create a shadow for our hut of the inside. So here we have a shadow layer. We're going to grab the bottom part from our base, but first we have to actually expand our live paint bucket. Then we're going to ungroup it and then just grab a copy of it and drag it onto a new layer. Then we're going to be filling it of course with a gradient. We will start working with a regular gradient, black to white, turn off the stroke, and then we're going to set the first stop to 0% opacity, also switch the opacity to multiply, and then the last stop a dark brown or a dark color. And then with the gradient annotator tool, we can just move our gradient around to see how it fits better. This takes some time, sometimes you just have to try a few times what looks best. And then once we're done, we're going to create another shape and apply the same gradient to it and just put it into the corner. Remember, one stop is set to 0% opacity. And of course, we're going to repeat the same step with our window as well. So once you're happy with the gradient, create another shape on the same layer for the window, apply the gradient, and that's pretty much it. And here are the steps we've taken. A sketch, we traced the outlines, then we filled it in. We added some details, some extras, and some gradients. And here's the final of my isometric hut or isometric wood cabin. I added a base with green grass, added more shadows, added some grass pieces around it, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and of course, I'll see you next time.